Side under brakes, down into Nova's turn. And look at the gap that Paul Radisic is taking a little look at in between these two. And he, he gets through. It through, yes. So Radisic, the aggressor, as he finds a gap and follows Marcus Ambrose through. So Russell Engel loses two spots in that altercation. The city of Biff and Bird. Sorry, Mark, the scenario overall, like you just mentioned, Jason Bright could be heading for a round victory now. Basically, Greg Murphy or Jason Bright need to win. If one of those guys win, they'll win the round overall if they win this race. Now, if one of those guys or both of those guys don't win, then it's left to some guys like Scaife, Bow, Longhurst, Bernard, and Compton, although his weekend has just been wrecked by a drive-through penalty, which Rodney Forbes has also gone in as well. So some interesting numbers to crunch at the end of this race. Let's take a look at all this bargy-argy stuff going on as they got very close. Ooh. Two close between Ambrose and Ingle and then backed it up again. This is on board Ingle's car. Looking across at the Pertec Ford, there's a collision. One or two hits there between the Ford and the Holden. They were still side by side at 240 k's, plunging down into Nova's corner, hard under brakes. Now, Paul Radisic saw an opportunity here, stuck the nose of the shell car right up behind the Pertec Ford and muscled his way through on the inside. The Nintendo replay brings it to you as it happens from on board the Castrol Commodore. Jason Bright, 2.7 seconds the lead over David Bernard. Bernard, meanwhile, has just set the fastest lap of this race, a 59.35, and that's significant. Sweating out to about a high 60 second bracket. Now they're consistently running in the mid 59. So maybe this cooler conditions helping the tyres, helping the cars find a bit more speed. Yeah, I'm with Gary. Gary, happy. Well, Baz, I mean, here's the proof, isn't it? Here's the Keystone Cops at their best yet again. I mean, we know what happened in Adelaide. I've been fighting about it for two months. I don't know how much I've spent. Clearly, any fool would have known who the leader of that race was. I mean, the public come to see the race. They don't want to see the race run under the pace car. Wouldn't happen in NASCAR. They should take some example from a category that knows what it's doing. So you're really not too pleased then, Gary, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, sums it up, I reckon. Thank Barry you, Sheen, the master of understatement. <laughs> and Gary Rogers, master of blatant statement. Just recapping exactly what Gary's talking about there while we're in the break. The uh, Munro safety car was out and it actually picked up the wrong leader. It had David Bernard as the first car behind him, but Jason Bright was in fact the leader of the race. So we had to wait while they shuffled the field around and let all the cars go past. So the safety car picked up Bright and got the order right. That's what Gary Rogers is getting upset about, the fact that they had to waste about three or four laps while they got it uh, all sorted out. Well, the one thing I'm grateful for is they did get it all sorted out before we went back to green flag yeah. racing. It would have been worse if they went off half cocked and restarted the race with the cars not in the right position. So we know that the cars, where they are on the track now is where they should be. Here's our race leader, Jason Bright, He's just opening up that gap, 2.7 it was, now it's down to 2.5, so Bernard is responding. A 59.85 for Bright, a 59.78 for the Haviland Ford, and there's the comparison of the last five lap times, and you can see it's a pretty even contest, swapping fastest laps between them. As David Bernard tries to hunt down the Holden Racing Team Commodore, Bernard's looking good here too, for a consistent performance, he may even be on the podium if he continues this race together. Just had a look down at Neil Crompton's position. He's now back in 26th. So that drive-through penalty cost him around 20 positions. For the order, Jason Bright, 2.5 seconds was the lead last time. Fastest lap time to the race so far. That's quite impressive. We saw them start to they sort of stretch out over 60 seconds yesterday. And now they're all hovering around the mid-59s. So I'm not sure if that's a result of the cooler weather conditions, but we expected by the time they got to race three, they'd be running around on shreds of tyres. But certainly these Dunlop control tyres have hung together particularly well on what is considered one of the nastiest circuits in the country on tyre wear. Let's go around this circuit now in the back seat of the Kmart Commodore car number 51 and just keep your eyes on the telemetry and also the view out the windscreen there as he comes up over Barbagallo Corner. Turn six, cold corner. Murphy in third spot. You can see David Bernard up ahead of him. Has not been able to make an impression on the Haviland Ford. This is an absorbing battle. It just goes to show how the Stone Brothers now are taking the fight up to TWR. Making the cars. The cars have always been quick, but they haven't been as sympathetic to their rear tyres. But it looks like they're starting to get some consistency in the chassis. 
in terms of looking after the rubber as well. So it looks like we've got a real fight on our hands here. Murphy's got a little bit of traffic between himself and Bernard. It's one of the better electrical forwards. He ducks down the inside. So now he's got clear track ahead of him. So Bernard fighting a lone hand here. Brad Jones is back and forth. Just out of this battle, about 2.6 seconds. Well, Gartan had just got through past Mark Scaife. They were six and seven. No worries. Coming around the end of that lap and now Gartander gets hold of position six and Scaife drops back to seventh. Well, an amazing run of success so far for Mark Scaife. Looks like it's going to come to an end here though in WA. It really has dominated the opening five rounds of the championship. But it all went wrong for him in race two earlier on this afternoon. Two wild trips across the country as well as a drive-through penalty. in damage control, trying to amass as many points as he can. But he's really not under that much pressure points-wise. He has a massive lead in the championship. Let's have a look at the Nintendo replay. This is the pass that Garth Tander made. Just a little kiss on the back. And he couldn't get any closer than that. And he ducks to the inside and obviously got a much better run out of cold corner. That's where he would have overtaken the HRT Commodore. Now I know what it's like to sit on the back of Mark Scaife's car while he's going around Barbagello Raceway at maximum speed. OK, let's check out the Shell Helix race score. It belongs to Jason Wright and David Bernard and Greg Murphy. The big mover has been Todd Kelly. He's moved up 25 positions. Scaife has climbed 24 positions into seventh. McConville and Ambrose still holding down top 10 positions at the moment. Rick Kelly, the young lion, putting in a good show. Russell Ingle has moved up 13. So, 17 laps to go to finish off round six of the V8 Supercar Championship. Come back and join us on your home of motorsport. We are back at Barbagello. The first time they've had longer races here. The first time they've had a compulsory pit stop. The first time the Dunlop control tyre has taken on the challenge of this incredibly abrasive track that just chops the rubber up and makes life difficult for the drivers like they're driving on marshmallow. Well there's no doubt these cooler conditions are helping them out here and everyone's probably put together a pretty good set of tyres for this final stint because the times are pretty close and consistent and everyone operating in the high 59 low 60 second bracket that surprised a lot of people I'm sure a lot of people would have thought these cars by now with what tyres they had remaining would have been much slower than that. Mark Larkham in the pit lane. The Orcon Falcon comes in for his tyre change. It will be his second visit to pit lane this afternoon. There's Todd Kelly. Coming under increasing fire from Garth Tander. This is the battle for fifth place. Remember the Conica series. It's been a ripper this year. Round four moves to Winton Raceway in rural Victoria. That's over the weekend of July 6th and 7th. So if you want some great V8 supercar action, make sure you get there. And speaking of trackside, you can see all the action on trackside from 3 o'clock the following weekend. RPMLive.tv is the website for our motorsport show. Sunday afternoons on Network 10, hosted by Billy Woods, of course, with special comments from Barry Sheen and Daryl Beattie and the entire 10 Motorsport team, rpmlive.tv. I showed you the merchandise earlier. You can check that out there. Also, the latest news, Woodsy's editorial and feedback line as well. Let us know what you think about motorsport in general, motorsport on 10, whatever you want to say, we'll listen to it. So Todd Kelly is getting some pressure with lights on from the Western Australian in the seat. Garth Tander, car number 34. Tander's doing well. His teammate Bhagwan is moving up as well. He's in eighth. This has been a pretty strong show of speed from the Gary Rogers stable. It was unfortunate that Garth broke that rear suspension component yesterday because he was really well positioned. But you can see here, the car is very, very quick. It's the battle for fifth. Todd Kelly moved up a massive amount of places after starting right down the back. Had an engine failure in race two. Boys did a very quick engine change and through some really good pit strategy and obvious race speed, Todd Kelly has managed to leapfrog the field up to fifth. Garth Tander now trying to hunt him down. He's put in a lot of work this weekend, Garth Tander, in front of his home crowd. And the car working very well with Scaife having a pretty lonely race there. There's Bhagwana, his teammate. 
Cameron McConwell in ninth. Marcus Ambrose in tenth. So this is survival of the fittest. It really has been a battle of the tyres all weekend. And now they're down to their final sets. 60.05 for Jason Bright. Incredibly consistent in the Holden Racing Team Commodore leading this one. Two seconds, the gap over David Bernard. So there's no way he's getting away from that Haviland Ford. We've got a real fight on our hands between the Stone Brothers and the TWR team. Gee, you think it just couldn't be any more different for guys like Scaife and Radisic. Radisic, especially from last year, comes here and does a clean sweep and ends up the overall round winner, of course. This time around, he's just having a shocker of a weekend. The whole Shell Helix racing team have been right behind the eight ball since they got here. Radisic in 16th position. And then think back to Canberra, our last round, when Scaife pretty much did nothing special all weekend and took out the Canberra 400, the Stegbar 400. Well, here, race two, absolutely everything went wrong for him. So it's all turned around in a flash. We're on board with Marcus Ambrose. He's just behind that group that we've been watching of Jason Bargwana and Cameron McConville. So Ambrose in 10th position at the moment. Single file. They've all settled down a little bit. Since they were going...